These days there's a lot of commotion about what Jeep is doing with their Wrangler, what Ford is doing with their brand new Bronco and Bronco Sport, and of course Toyota, 4Runner, etc. But not many people are talking about this, the Nissan Xterra. Yes, the Xterra is discontinued now, no longer for sale in the United States. But I have a very special one right here and have the owner, Angel. Nice to meet you. Th thanks for coming, dude who has purchased it recently, modified it a little bit, turned it into a very, I think, very, very cool and amazing off-roader. Guys, I interrupt this video to let you know about this week's TFL Bids bargain. We have some amazing trucks and SUVs available for sale at tflbids.com. For example, this week we have a 2010 Ford F-150 SVT Raptor, the original Raptor with a V8. It's a short wheelbase. It's in the original molten orange color and it's in really great condition, low miles, and it's available at no reserve. And Nathan actually gives us a personal walk around of the truck to show you the condition of it. So check out the site using the link below. We're gonna have up to three trucks or SUVs available for sale every single week. And please submit your truck or SUV to our site so you can sell to like-minded enthusiasts right there at tflbids.com. So Angel, can you kind of start? Uh, what year is this and then when did you get it? Yeah, so it's a 2007 Xterra, the off-road trim. I got it around uh, a little under two years ago. Uh huh. I've done suspension work, lifted it two and a half inches in the front, add a leaf in the rear, 33s, um, some re uh, recovery points in the rear, cut the bumper something that a lot of nissan people do uh-huh some the roof basket the recovery tracks mm, oh a super 44 muffler from Flowmaster. okay i want to hear that later yeah we'll show that yeah <laughs> yeah so tell me about what it was like to find one because right it was discontinued in the u.s around 2014 or 15 mm -hmm. 2015 and so you were looking for it what three years ago yeah, I was looking for about almost a year. I was looking for Forerunners and Frontiers. And the Forerunners were a little over my price range for the same mileage. They were like double the price. Mm -hmm. And the Frontiers were a little scarcer to come by for a good example. And I found this one, one owner. Um, pretty good mileage, I think, for a Colorado vehicle, 160. And yeah, it just, it was a perfect vehicle for me. So. so how much uh, did you purchase it for? I got it for 3700 Whoa. And yeah, it was a really good deal. <laughs> Way lower than any other ones that I found. And so far, no problems, just normal maintenance. The ma most major thing that I've had to do is the alternator and then the tie rod ends, but everything else is just altern er, oil changes. Okay, well, uh, we'll get to the suspension in one second. Can you pop the hood? I wanna yep. kind of talk about the engine. And also, if you come over here really quick, uh, you can kind of see the off-road uh, badge. So what Nissan was doing is they did have specific uh, more off-road worthy models before Pro 4X actually came out because Xterris used to have a Pro 4X model as well. But before that, they had the off-road model. And this, and we haven't said this yet, right? This is a V6. Mm -hmm. It's got a six-speed manual yep. and rear locker yep. and uh, four low, obviously, four yep. high and four low. And so I, this this is a four liter, right? Yep, it is. And I believe it came with a higher gear ratio from factory than the other normal Xterras, being a 369 gear ratio. So a little bit low, slower speed kind of control, yeah, right? And it accelerates a little faster and stuff like that. Especially here in Colorado, we need you know mm -hmm. some extra oomph. Did you do this kind of the air intake system, yeah, I or did. was okay. I did it just mainly for the sound because it you can hear it a little more growl. Uh huh. So yeah. I so yeah, that. so from the factory, these were about 261 horsepower, about 281 pound-feet of torque. So this is, this is the 4-liter. They also had it in the Frontier, uh, right? And it was a really solid engine. Have you had any issues so far? I have not, no. Okay. Just like I said, the alternator and the tie rod ends, but the engine itself has been perfect. No weird sounds, nothing. Just oil changes, and that's it. Very, very neat. Um, I see you kind of did a little bit on the terminals here on the yeah. battery. 
Do you have some extra accessories or something? Not yet, but I got those mainly for the fact that they were not tightening anymore, the factory uh -huh. terminals. Uh -huh. And instead of just getting some factory replacements, I found those for 50 bucks, I think, online. I don't remember what they okay. were, the brand name, but... Uh -huh. Yeah, you can see like it has different mounts for auxiliary lights or whatever you want to add. Um, and then, so let's turn our attention a little bit before we go inside to the suspension, obviously. Oh, okay, let <laughs> me... Oh, how does that work? Oh, yeah. It's broken, so... It's a little bit broken, sorry. <laughs> no, you're good. You want to rev? Let it uh, rev it a little. So first of all, I love the look. I love the cut front bumper. Thank you. Um, have you seen other people do that or? Yeah, I'm in a Xterra Facebook group uh -huh. and it's something that people do because the bumpers for these are way more expensive than like a Jeep Wrangler $300 front bumper. These are like a thousand, like 800 and up. Uh -huh. You can't find them for cheap. And me being a 17 year old with <laughs> barely any money, uh, I just grabbed a Sawzall and an <laughs> and angle grinder and yeah. went to town and I think it came out looking really symmetrical and clean cut so Yeah, and it also very purposeful right mm -hmm. and you can have bare approach angle You can mm -hmm. put your tire on obstacles go over it and I see on this side I see you put a red uh, hook on the front. Yeah, that was actually the factory tow hook uh, I just painted it red, you know, because that's the trend nowadays with new trucks and everything yeah, and also um, it's more visible now, right? Because yeah. before when the, all the bumper, the factory bumper would be there, it's kind of not very visible. Mm -hmm. Very cool. So you have Bilstein shocks and Bilstein shocks, I mean, they put on Pro 4X models too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, then the newer ones were those exact yellow and blue ones, just uh -huh. like TRDs, I think. Uh -huh. They also have those. And I just went for those also because those are the cheapest ones Bilstein make. And like I said, I'm not very big on money right now so. yes <laughs> but but was it difficult to find kind of the lift kit for it or was it pretty easy not at all actually i just searched on amazon there's a lot like nist tech you can see the sticker i have right there yeah i ordered they're local right yeah they are yeah, yeah. i ordered uh the rear suspension lift for that off of nist tech but the front one i got off of amazon there was a lot of options so it wasn't very hard to come by surprisingly Where, so you said edel leaf over here yep. right yep okay so let's look kind of in the back here really quick and then go inside. All right, so you just kind of added the re recovery points here, right? Yep, correct. How was that? H how did you do that? It's just, uh, so it had a hitch uh -huh. and literally it just bolts in the same bolt holes as the hitch did. Okay. And it's, I used class 10.9 bolts, so really strong tensile okay. strength, I think it's called. Yeah. And. I've pulled out some cars this past snowstorm. Okay. A couple cars, yeah, with the toe straps I have up there on top. So, yeah, and they work really well. No complaints there. Yeah, of course you have the rack. Do, do you have some storage system in here too? I do, yeah. Yeah, let's show that. <clears throat> so, from factory, they came with these little baskets on uh -huh. that side as well. And that little net's factory, but I, mine, the previous owner lost it, so I had to buy a new one. And I have the com air compressor to fill up my tires. And then I think this is really cool. Little, this is a factory storage compartment, mm -hmm. factory basically. Storage compartment. But you have, a, you have a lot of stuff in here. Yep, a lot of off-roading little tool bag, D-rings. Oh, zip ties, gotta have yeah. zip ties. <laughs> I need to throw some duct tape in there too, so. <laughs> <laughs> That's very cool. Yeah. Alrighty, um, and then tires. Tell me about tires. Um, slightly bigger than mm -hmm. stock? Yep, so. Stock, they come with, the off-road came, uh, the off-road trim come with a uh, bigger tire than the rest of the Xterra's from factory. Yeah. I think the, the rest of the Xterra's come with a 31. Uh-huh. And the off-roads come with a 32, a 265, 16. Yeah. And the ones that I went with were 33-inch Milestar Patagonia MTs. They're 285, 75, 16s on the stock wheels. Uh-huh. And Xterra's can run 33 stock, no problem, no lift. It just rubs a little bit in the front but it's just the fender liner and you just, there's a thing called the melt mod and you just pretty much hit, use a heat gun and push the plastic in a little bit. Okay. And it alleviates that problem. But so. you have a small lift on it. So yeah, I do, you, you, don't, you don't have any issues with that, right? Uh -uh. And I like the, the tires look aggressive, but I like the stock look, uh, the stock wheel. Yeah. Um, that's pretty cool. Um, let's look at the inside. Oh, and you brought um, original sticker too. Yeah, original sticker, yep. 
All right, so kind of show the inside. I'll be right there. Um, the driver's seat has some wear. Yeah, it was there from the previous owner. I, I'm guessing because it's a taller vehicle. Instead of hopping, like you have to kind of hop in, they just rub their butt behind onto the side of the seat and it just wore into a hole. Yeah, do you know if that's a common issue with these or? I think it you, is because I was looking for a new seat to get like to alleviate that problem, look nice. Okay. And uh, they were all like torn, if not torn, just like starting to rip, so. I don't know if you could see this maybe from the other side, um, but I wanted to show you guys later the the switch for the locker and also the four low. And it's a six speed manual, yep. it's really cool. But you, let's do this first. So this is the original sticker, that's pretty awesome. So let's see, the original price was in 2007, 29,785. And it had a few options, not a lot, right? Rockford Fastgate Audio. Let's see, protection package, in-cabin mi micro filter, and the side curtain airbag. So it's a pretty modern yeah. car. Yeah, it had a lot of things. Like it had the tow package as well, came with the factory receiver hitch. And yeah. I'm really happy about the audio package because I was thinking I was going to have to add a little sub uh -huh. just for some bass, but it has a sub under the, the driver's seat and it sounds really clear and it bumps as much as you need it to so i think you got a good deal yeah i think so too yeah <laughs> when you really purchased it first yeah uh and it's probably worth more money now because yeah, definitely because these are getting rare yep oh i remember testing an xterra it's pretty cool and for taller guys it's okay still mm -hmm. yep there's enough headroom and there's also a cutout here for the rear seat kind of a stadium seating um let me see. Yeah, the, the, the manual is, you know, really kind of good engagement. And here's your four wheel drive shifter. It's a knob. It's very common. A lot of them are still being used. Your rear locker, um, dynamic control system, switch, you know, stereo climate control system. It's very simple, very cool. And of course the gauges are very, um, very similar to what some Frontiers had. And of course the door cards also very similar to some um, what Frontiers had as well. Um, very cool. Have you taken it on some trail runs? I have here in Colorado, not any two truly difficult ones, just yeah. mainly sightseeing trails. Yeah. Because when I did, it was just on 33s, no stop, no lift. So uh, okay. I took it on the Switzerland trail, which you guys do a lot. Yeah. And then Gross Reservoir, which is like 20 minutes down the road from that. But this summer, I'm planning on hitting Moab with it with a couple buddies. So, yeah, that'd be awesome. I, it's very capable rig, and obviously Nissan. Um, I wish you know, I wish Xterra would come back. Yeah, so do I. <laughs> Actually, and uh, in the new frontier is coming, mm -hmm. right? It's supposed to be here this summer. So Nissan, if you're listening, I don't know. Yeah. But but if you can turn the new frontier into a uh, also an Xterra. Mm -hmm. SUV, that would yep. be that would be very sweet. I think the front end on the new Frontiers looks would look really good with the SUV body on it. That'd be cool. So is it fair to say you love it? I love it. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so do you have any other plans, or is this kind of where you're going to leave it for now? Well, for now, I'm going to leave it as is. Just I want to get some sliders on it, and then, okay. Uh, yeah, that's pretty much the build. I don't plan on doing anything else on it. Maybe lift it a little bit more. And that's cool, but yeah, it's kind of fine. a low budget, kind of a really mm -hmm. usable vehicle. Which yeah, is the most expensive part were just the tires. Very cool, dude. Well, thank you for bringing it by. I really love, I wish, you know, we were able to uh, do more Xterra videos, but maybe we can meet up this summer yeah, somewhere. Definitely. Um, on the trail. Trails. Yeah, that would be awesome. Thanks, dude. Yeah, well, thanks for having me.